to I have to go back to these real quick. Um, oh. You know, so Juan is saying, you know, show all, all three measurements at the main listening position, and then Andrew says, but we are not listening near field. You need MLP results for your test. Okay, I, I get that. I get that. That's how every single room correction works. Like you place the mic in the listening position, and it tries to make it follow some nice smooth target curve. But that's what I'm kind of arguing with Magic Beans. Now we may disagree on this, Aaron, but I'm I'm curious. Would you rather have a it, assuming you had to only take in room measurements, right? No clipple, right? And you have to judge. Yeah, you, <laughs> you have to judge based on whether the MLP measurement was smooth in a room, right? Not in the car, because I know cars are different. Okay. But MLP response in a room versus one where the near field response is ideal and smooth so if if the near field response is nice and smooth right the ma main listening position one may look a little bit weird may not be what you expect right or one where the main listening position one looks ideal but then the near field measurement is all wonky and not smooth which one do you think is going to give you a all right so let's establish that when you say near field you're basically talking about a quasi anechoic measurement method right okay i would say yes so basically what you're leaving me with is what i prefer to have the results dictated by the measurement done at the main listening position results being eq or right. would i rather have the results dictated by measurements done in a quasi anechoic measure method um Assuming that the speaker takes well to EQ in both situations, I would I would much rather have an anechoic measurement, period. Because I can yeah. correct the speaker before I put it in the room, and then the room is going to do its thing, and then hopefully I can go through and treat the bass, you know, somehow with equalization or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would prefer. And I think most people who understand the difference in speakers versus a room are going to say, yeah, I would rather have a well-designed speaker. And if it's yeah. not designed well out the box, can I EQ it? Like, is a crossover transition pretty good to where it's not problematic? And then can I equalize the sound to to work well for me? You know, either flat on axis or gently sloped or whatever, depending on the design, because those things matter. Mm. Um, yeah, I'll take anechoic measurement. Because, dude, when you're in, the, and you know this, when you are, you are talking about pseudo-anechoic, are you still saying... Uh, <laughs> Because I know, of course. Uh, well, your I mean, so you know that your method is pseudo anechoic, right? I mean, right. that's I'll just call it pseudo anechoic because that's probably what it's closer to, right? When you said anechoic, so I want to make sure it's clear that you're saying pseudo and not like. Yeah. Well, okay. when I say anechoic, I'm talking like in an ideal world, you have anechoic measurement for yeah. your speaker, and then you say, "All right, the the treble is too much. I'm going to tame it down. These things are kind of messed up. I'm going to fix these resonances." And then I'm going to put it in the room, mm. and then you then you can measure from the seated position and let it do the bass management and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not bass management, but resonance from the room control. Try to mm -hmm. get those things fixed. That's what I would go for. Okay. Um, I guess the only thing is, you know, if you have it behind an acoustic transparent screen, that's going to affect the high frequencies in the an anechoic measurement is not as relevant in that situation because but you listen. Or you measure again in the room. Oh, yeah, I know. I said you listen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got to listen to this. Dude, I don't care what the measurements look like. I still want to hear the speaker. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. Um, so my example would be these Cali Audio speakers that do measure well, right? Chana likes them. I like them. You know, you like them. The mm -hmm. Cali Audio LP6, they measure well, well anechoically. Right on your clipple, I would say they measure pretty well. Uh, in my in room responses, they measure near field pretty well. Now, if you place these into the room and you measure at the main listening position of these good speakers, do you think that's going to be smooth? Maybe not. That response may look pretty funky, right? Behind a screen, behind it, and then put yeah. it behind the screen. Now, yeah. but, but let's just say, forget the screen. You just put it in your room and then measure at your main listening position. Oh, yeah. That might look weird, right? Yeah. So you take something like Dirac or Odyssey, and it's going to say, no, nah, we got to fix that. We got to fix that. We got to fix that speaker. 
and it'll it'll try to do it based on the main listening position measurement. Now you go and measure that speaker again, right? If I were to keep that EQ and then put it on the clipple, that speaker is going to have some weird <laughs> yeah. non-linear response, right? For sure. So is that good? Is that going to be better? I, I think it's making the sound of the speaker worse. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what it's you're correcting. I know. Yeah, it, it depends on what you're correcting for. You know. Yeah. So, and I think that that's the main downfall. Uh, my opinion. My opinion. You know, and I don't mind arguing with with somebody else about this, but my main thing is that the the fact that they're only measuring at the main listening position is why. Some people don't like the sound. Sometimes you say like, man, this sounds weird. Something sounds off. I don't know what it is. You know, the measurement looks great. So I don't understand why I don't like it. I think it's because you've made the the, the response of those speakers worse. Yeah. So yeah. you've sacrificed one thing for the other. You've <clears throat> well, sacrificed that's why. The, the, that sound for the a better um steady state response that includes the direct and reflected sounds but your ears don't hear exactly that way you hear direct and then reflected mm -hmm. right so you hear both sounds the mic only hears the summed not I, don't, I wouldn't say summed it already hears the effects after the room has done its thing it tries yeah, to separate not, out the two but it can't completely yeah, you're not doing that well most people aren't doing that with an rta they're not separating out Direct sound, reflected sound, and things like that. No, I mean, how are they going to? Dirac do? is right. Dirac is. Dirac is, but I'm just saying, like, when people are using like REW and trying to figure these things out. Yeah, Dirac is that. trying to, right? I wouldn't say that you can get a near field measurement. Otherwise, I don't think that they would have done some of the EQ that they did. You know, they probably would have kept the higher frequencies untouched. Anyway, anyway, it's an interesting discussion. And uh, we'll have to see when Magic Beans does come out super soon. We're working on the website right now so that you can purchase it, right? So it has to have a working website. And so that's what we're working on. The app is pretty much done. Like, I don't expect very many changes on the app at all. Just getting it on the website so people can purchase it. And we'll see if I'm correct, right? Because I'm arguing for the fact that Near Field being a better response and sacrificing, you know, if that's what you want to call it, and a more ideal MLP response, main listening position response, I think that most people will prefer that. I think that's a better correction. But we'll see. We'll see if I'm wrong. You'll see. The proof will be in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding. I don't know. Okay. Make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com forward slash daily i